Hi, uh, good evening viewers. We have now Dr. Nimrod with us. He is a senior consultant at Tel Aviv Medical Center Israel. And the reason why he has joined us uh, graciously is because we want to talk about the robots and their their use in in joint replacement surgeries nowadays. Uh, he has a wealth of experience. He has been practicing joint replacement for the last 15 years and his experience includes having uh, training in, in apart from in Israel, in US also. And he's very well versed with the latest uh, technologies happening uh, pertaining to joint replacements because that's his first love. Uh, so I, we welcome you here at Medanta Lucknow. And, 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 and I hope that you have a fruitful and a joyful stay in India. Be careful of the bugs going around. So, uh, so uh, Dr. Nimrod, uh, the first question is that, that the joint replacement has been for the last 50, 60 years. And we still think that whatever uh, previous methods were there, they were achieving good results. What led to the invention and the popularity of robotics? in joint replacement surgeries? So for almost like 40 years, for the last 40 years, there hasn't been a big change in, in our top in, in hips and knees. But for the last five to seven years, we're, we're, it's almost like a revolution. People are rethinking about a lot of things regarding implants are getting better. Uh, and people are thinking how we can put the implant themselves more to fit personalized as for this specific patient and technology has invaded into the OR and now really assists us with uh, doing both of these things, making it a personalized knee for this specific patient. So, I, yes, I, so I think that, that, uh, that robotic surgery makes the patient own the implant more by making it more personalized. Is that... Uh, Definitely by... The first part of the robotics is the navigation, is understanding the anatomy of this specific patient regarding its bony anatomy, regarding its uh, laxity, the range of motion, the stability. And just after this part, you start to decide how you're going to do the second phase, which is implanting the, the prosthesis. So by doing that, you're going to do a, a much more personalized, much more, uh, you're going to fit the implant better to this specific patient. Okay. So uh, in terms of the survivability of the implants, do you think that robotics uh, matter? Because, uh, I think the cuts are more precise. So do you think that, that if we make the cuts more precise with robots, would the implants survive more as compared to the traditional methods? So the traditional implants already have a very good longevity. Yeah. Over 20, 30 years yeah. in over 90% of success. But with the robot, you will be able to do it in a much more safer manner. Okay. You will be able to do it in a fit, a better fit for the implants, prepare the bone for a better fit. So in the long run, you will probably get better results regarding longevity and regarding function. Okay. How does a patient perceive the benefits of robotics early in the early stage of surgery and in the latter stage of surgery? We have partially covered the latter stage since the fits it fits better. So the chances of the implant having a longevity is probably better as compared to the traditional method. But is there any difference in the patient's experience after the robotic with the traditional surgeries? So this is a difficult question because parallel to the advancement of technology, there is advancing, advancement in technique, which the combination of both is probably the good thing, getting the good thing of both sides. So by enabling to doing a better technique of making it more kinematic, more uh, of this patient, and with the technology with you, you can probably, and it has been shown that you have better early results. You need to do less surgery. You need to do less releases or less surgery on the patient in order to put the implants in. If there is an able surgeon who is well-trained in the traditional methods, which, and he, it, and because of that surgical technique, 
which you said kinematic alignment which is very dear to me which allows very minimum soft tissue release along with the robotics will help the patient not only having a good longevity but also in the immediate post operative period offer more comfortable post operative recovery as compared to the traditional means yes i completely agree it's because of the of the minimum release that you do of the soft tissue the patient is able to get the range of motion better earlier is able to walk and he needs less pain management and and pain medication for uh as well as they're going to feel that the knee is much more theirs it's like their natural knee and the ability to combine the technology with a good surgeon is part of the best way the best way because you're not the robot doesn't do the surgery by itself yeah that's it. not that unfortunately we don't see the side So we do the surgery we decide exactly what the robot does. So that's an important point which thank you for sharing that robot alone doesn't do the surgery it's the surgeon who is in charge of the robot and robot helps in planning and execution of the cuts but it's the surgeon who has the final control of the robot. It is an assisted device for the surgeon. So yeah. It's not that's why it's called an assistant robot. It's not an assisted technology. The robot is not autonomically works without the surgeon so and specifically with a specific robot that we're talking about it it really is the surgeon holds the saw holds the machine so it doesn't work by itself okay in terms of the patient benefits i think one of the major benefits which you're looking at is that the patients can their, their stay in the hospital has become shorter because of these benefits what are your views Uh, about these and and what is your practice back in his way okay so the trend in arthroplasty is discharging the patient as quick as you can for as long as the patient is safe and is able to do his specific you know walking with a walker outside of the hospital by himself uh the trend of uh, discharging early has been running for the last probably like 10 years and when i started my rest it was like 10 years 10 days 10 days yeah bro. yeah now 30% of my patients are discharged in the same day oh wow that and if i operate early in the morning they are discharged in the afternoon and most of my patients like more than 90% of my patients are discharged under 24 hours which makes a huge difference for the patient they go back to the family they do the rehab and everything at their home in a comfortable area where there good food the family beside them So it's a better atmosphere and there are less infections and less problems due to longer stigmatization in the home. So that means the patient are mobilized and 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 much earlier. So by by, by again by involving a good technology, technique and modern uh pain methods, we are able to uh mobilize the patient earlier. Like in our hospital, I have I mean um, I generally mobilize about 3 hours post operatively by using the adductor canal block by using an anesthesia which basically allows the patient to reduce the pain and and provide the mobility uh we are uh, we are moving towards uh discharging a patients within 48 hours uh but not yet 24 hours in our setup because I think post operatively you need lot of support for these patients whether they are going home or not uh uh when the patients go home uh what is your uh what is your suggestions uh or prescription regarding how many weeks of physiotherapies these patients uh, follow do you have any plan physiotherapies for these patients so at least in my house for the plan usually attract for the first 3 weeks they have two or three times a week physiotherapists uh they have a session with a the physical therapist but the main issue is doing physiotherapy by yourself you okay. can't exercise by yourself uh every hour or two you got to stand up do some walking and the more you walk the better you get and the less pain you have so it has been proven that the more you walk and the more you tr- you do f- uh, s- self physiotherapy you're going to be the better it is healthy. So I went to Steve Howell in California uh, Sacramento and his suggestion was that 
in the immediate post op he asks the patient to walk 5 minutes every hour right and that's what i mean i have been trying to do that in my patients some people do some people don't so i agree that 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 self physical therapy probably is the best physical therapy uh we have discussed that how robotics have helped would you uh, caution people of not using robots in a certain sets of 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 patients or with, with deformities so on the contrary the more difficult the surgery is i would recommend on that you host the robot so the biggest the bigger the fault the more difficult the case is i think the technology is here to assist the surgeon in a, in by this new technology it will make the surgery easier for the surgeon and for the patient so the combination uh, so i feel more confident doing difficult cases with the technology with the technology so again we also have once you have discussed the robots uh, what is your uh, opinion about the other new innovations in the joint placement at least in the field of knee arthroplasty so i think it's uh, one is the philosophy of alignment as you mentioned yeah. professor howard yeah uh, the other is part of the pain management the whole follow up and re- rapid recovery after surgery how we can rapid the recovery of the patient how we can bring them back to better function by doing physiotherapy by doing pain management by doing uh, self physiotherapy and by doing specific uh, exercises and by avoiding a lot of soft tissue releases the knee is less swollen so and all these things are going to make the recovery easier for them so these are the major issues one more thing is regarding the blood uh, conservative treatment that we give our patients patients during surgery uh it used to be a, used to be called a very big surgery uh doing it told me but now an hour later after the start the beginning now uh, the patient is already after usually it's uh, uh you can do it in general anesthesia or spinal anesthesia and then you can give some uh take some medication like transexamic acid but will avoid more bleeding low mildly surgery and also i think the robot helps us because you don't have to make extra holes you don't have to make extra cuts because of the robot so i think it helps in preserving the blood also Because it makes it a more minimal invasive surgery than what it used to be. Lowering the releases, not opening the canals, or doing all kinds of things that are to avoid this bleeding. Yeah. Uh, now uh, we'll we'll move to those short for a shorter duration into another interesting thing about uh, using the diet anterior approach in the hips. So uh, uh, it has been. gradually getting more and more popular uh still in in a very incipient stage in india uh but uh i was introduced to it about a uh, year and a half by our friend uh, nabil what are your views about the diet and your approach and how different it makes the patient's life it it makes to the patient's life as compared to the traditional hip replacement approaches So I've been using uh, the DA the direct anterior approach for the last I think from say 2011 uh and I do all approaches from posterior anterior lateral and direct anterior it's definitely easier on the patient if you do a direct anterior if the anatomy is normal and you don't have the special case then the DAA is probably the easiest uh, option for the patient uh it makes the recovery easy and because it's a uh, internervous so you don't your it your approach is between the muscles and between the nerves so the injury to muscles and nerves is minimal so it makes uh, the recovery easier you don't injure any muscles on the way so the walking immediately after is going to be easy in our set of patients our patients uh do certain activities like sitting cross leg or sometimes they do squat uh which we found it extremely difficult to manage in with the traditional approaches uh what is your opinion will will the da help them to be more flexible and mobile while performing those activities or uh, so getting the range of motion is probably easier with this approach Uh again during the surgery you will have to check of course for stability 
Sure, but it is a more stable approach going from the front than going from the back. Um, and because you injure less uh, soft tissue around the joint, the joint is more stable, so it allows patients to do squatting, to do uh, cross knee sitting, to do um, if you're praying on their knees or bowing uh, down. And also, I think it more it is more uh, uh, cosmetically better if you are doing another variant of that incision called the bikini incision, especially in females, because I think it 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 doesn't leave a bad scar as compared to the it goes along with the line uh, along line uh, the healing Langens lines. Yeah, that's what we call. It. So I think we had very uh, insightful uh, uh, thoughts provoking ideas from you, Dr. Nimrod. And uh, uh, we would like to have these conversations going on for a longer period of time. Whenever you have our subsequent visits back here, we would welcome you back in, in Lucknow, Vedanta. Uh, Lucknow is a place with, for, known for delectable uh, tastes too. So I don't know whether you have been able to you know, taste those food, but, but if not, next, this time, the next time, We'll make sure that you, you fall in love with this place. I will, I'm sure. I love the food here and uh, everything is great here. So I'll be happy to visit again and hope to see you soon. Yeah. And good luck with your the new technology and I think it's a great uh, asset for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Mm -hmm.